This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Neighbor.com, which is a really great idea for rideshare drivers. What if you made an extra $10,000 every year without doing any extra work? You can earn money on Neighbor.com by renting out the space you don't use to people in need of storage or long-term parking. Like if you have a garage, a shed, driveway, or, or parking space, start monetizing it on Neighbor.com. Neighbor is free to use, and unlike your normal 9-to-5 job, Neighbor lets you earn passive income without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Neighbor also protects each host with its $2 million guarantee. So if you're looking for an additional way to earn income, check out Neighbor.com and see how much money your extra space can make you. An extra few hundred bucks each month sure comes in handy as the economy starts to open up and drivers get back on the road. Drive during the day and make passive income on Neighbor while you sleep. If you use the link in the show notes below to list your space, Neighbor will give you an extra $50 when your space gets rented. Neighbor.com is a no-brainer for side hustlers. So visit host.neighbor.com forward slash ride to get started making money today. Again, it's host.neighbor.com forward slash ride. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Ride Share Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to today's episode. I am recording today's episode on Monday, June 1st, and I'm going to get us updated on the news. There are things happening in the rideshare industry. So much of the news has been about uh, all the you know, challenges we've had uh, getting, comp- getting government uh, assistance. And um, the first article I've got here is from CNN Politics. And it says, millions of freelancers still wait for coronavirus unemployment benefits. So, you know, another 2.1 million Americans file for unemployment benefits. First, they talk about one guy here who's uh, gotten some benefits. And uh, yet while the new program has worked for this guy many others are still waiting for payments two months after lawmakers passed the two trillion coronavirus relief package that made more americans eligible to file jobless claims some 7.8 million people in 33 states were claiming benefits under the pandemic unemployment assistance program pua as of may 9th according to the department of labor so um then it's the uh, next subsection. Relief turns to frustration. I get it. I get it. I am currently not getting paid myself. I made a uh, an episode just about that, about all the challenges of being an Uber or Lyft driver and trying to get benefits. So that's in the news. So that's one of the six stories. Done. Let's move on. This next story comes to us from uh, Barron's. And uh, this is called Amazon could take on Uber and Lyft with a Zooks acquisition. Hold on. Time for a little Nespresso. By the way, we're listening to After the Rain by the great John Coltrane. John Coltrane. Hey, have you guys uh, seen on... um, Have you seen on Facebook a lot of people are doing this... uh, Name name ten albums that greatly influenced you. Uh, it's kind of fun. Um, I just started to do that, 
Here, I'll tell you my 10 really quickly. First album I got was actually a cassette tape when I was about 12, was uh, by a group called Iron Butterfly. It was an album called Inagata De Vida. They were kind of a one-hit wonder, but uh, what a hit. Next one was uh, called The Captain and Me. It was an album by the Doobie Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Number three, Led Zeppelin IV. First time I heard Stairway to Heaven. This is when I fell in love with Led Zeppelin, my one true love in life. Number four, my high school years, Frampton Comes Alive. Massive, massive. Number five, I started to slow things down a little bit. Steely Dan had an album called Asia. Love it. Then uh, continuing to slow down a little bit, this actually took a little bit of a country turn. The Rolling Stones, double uh, genius album record called Exile on Main Street with Tumbling Dice. College years, we were big into Bruce Springsteen. Darkness on the Edge of Town, that was number seven. Number eight was Neil Young's Everyone Knows This Is Nowhere with uh, Down by the River and uh, Cowgirl in the Sand. Classic guitar licks. Then, uh, then there's a big gap of time. Go to uh, till I'm like my early 40s, and the first time I listened to Miles Davis, Kind of Blue, I knew uh, I wanted to listen to more jazz. And then number 10 on my list, John Coltrane's A Love Supreme. A Love Supreme. What a special, special album that is. Uh, so there you go. Wasn't planning to share all that with you on today's podcast episode, but those are my 10 most influential albums of all time. Pretty cool. All right. And uh, now now, uh, now we're listening to uh, Here's That Rainy Day by Stan Getz. So this is just a mix. It's actually a mix I used to play in the mornings when I drove called Beginnings, which is available on Spotify if you ever want to know what Jay listened to when he was driving people around all those many years. Uh, you can find me on Spotify under my name, and the playlist is called Beginnings, and it's got some classical music and a lot of jazz, a little bit of female vocals, really nice mix, really nice mix. So that's what's going on in the background. Okay, let's get back to this. Amazon could take on Uber and Lyft with a Zooks acquisition. So uh, from what I understand, uh, Zooks is a company that's developing uh, driverless cars. Um, and that would put them in direct competition with uh, Uber and Lyft, who are also working on driverless cars. Remember, the game plan for Uber and Lyft is that they don't even need to deal with us, the drivers, right? They just have cars that drive themselves. That way they eliminate the whole expense. They don't care if they call us independent contractors or <laughs> employees because we're out of the picture. Um, but this is interesting. If there's a company that I would think would put the fear of God in Uber and Lyft, it's Amazon and Jeff Bezos. Um, so uh, it's interesting. We still got to see uh, if that actually happens. But um Barron's Magazine has that article. Amazon could take on Uber and Lyft with a Zooks acquisition. So we'll keep you posted on that if that actually happens. Next story. Uber CEO tweets that the company will donate $1 million to groups making criminal justice in America more just for all. So this is in response to the George Floyd uh, incident, murder. I'll go ahead and call it a murder. I saw. I watched the. I watched the video. That's the guy who got his uh, neck stepped on, kneed down to the ground for nine nine minutes, six minutes. He was saying, "I can't breathe," and then he just stopped talking because he was dying, and uh, he died. And then the whole country started rioting, and that's actually still going on as I speak uh, today. So Uber CEO Dara Kay announced on Sunday yesterday that the company would be donating $1 million to two criminal justice reform groups in solidarity with the black community and with peaceful protests. Khazra Shwahi made the comments on Twitter condemning racism and inequality and endorsing reform for the American criminal justice system. So it seems like a lot of people are, um, you know, jumping on the bandwagon here. And that's great. You know, the more money, the more voice, uh, the more this is brought out into the day, into the light of day, uh, the quicker we can uh, 
come out of the fires. Be this is a birth birth uh, from the fires, and uh, I think we're hopefully going to see a new consciousness when it comes to the police's relationship to uh, all all of our society. It says in the last paragraph here, the news comes after five days of sustained and escalating nationwide protests against the police killing of Floyd Floyd George. I think it's George Floyd. Earlier on uh, Sunday, Amazon tweeted out its uh, own statement of support for the protesters. Um, on Saturday, T-Mobile, Microsoft Chief People Officer Kathleen Hogan and Zillow CEO all tweeted their own statements of support while Twitter posted a message earlier in the week. Uber is the first to announce a direct donation. All right. So uh, good for Uber. Good for Uber. All right. So Uber did that. Next article. Uber says 158,000 drivers will lose work if they're reclassified as employees. So this is Uber's scare tactic to... uh, make this egregious statement saying that one over 158,000 drivers will lose work if they're reclassified as employees. And then it says not all economists agree. So Uber is playing the game of let's make let's make uh, the situation look as terrible as possible to drivers. And what they're trying to do is get Uh, people to feel like that their ballot initiative is a good thing for the drivers and that making drivers employees is a bad thing for the drivers. So um, if you read down to the bottom here, uh, one of the economists says, Uber and Lyft currently use their drivers inefficiently as they carry passengers only about half of driver app time, Reich said. Under AB5, efficiency would increase, resulting in more pay for drivers, less traffic on the streets, and less air pollution. Traffic speeds would increase, making rides for passengers shorter. There's going to be a lot of uh, press about the situation, uh, especially as we approach November. And what's predictable is that Uber and Lyft are going to make it seem like the uh, the turning uh, drivers into employees is the worst possible idea. Um, and uh, there's going to be drivers groups that are going to say this is exactly what we need. This is exactly what we need. Um, several politicians, it says, like Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, have backed AB5. On Tuesday, Democratic presidential hopeful Joe Biden weighed in, saying on Twitter that gig economy giants are trying to gut the law and exempt their workers. It's unacceptable. I urge Californians to vote no on the initiative this November. So, you know, it's up to you. It's really up to you. But I always go back to this. If Uber says it's a bad thing for drivers, it's probably a good thing for drivers, right? Um, I base that on my four years of driving experience that every year my situation as a driver got worse. Um, I had to work harder to make the same money Um, I had to change the times of day that I drove. Um, Bit by bit, the deal, the overall deal as a driver got worse, not better. And that is a result of Uber and Lyft. And throughout that whole time, Uber and Lyft were saying they were making things better for us. And in fact, they were not. So my history with these companies is that they say one thing, but they do a different thing. And I base that purely on my own results, my own numbers, I saw my pay get cut. I saw, uh, you know, um, prime time and surge get decimated. I saw lots of things uh, change. Bonuses, you know, the bonuses we used to get changed. Uh, All of it making it worse for drivers. Uber and Lyft saying it was better for drivers. So um, when they say this is a good thing for for drivers, this uh, initiative in November, I say bullshit. but make up your own mind. Check it out. Uh, we did a we did we actually did a, sur- a study of of that initiative, and it does pay less than your current. It does pay drivers less than they're currently making now, um, not even as employees. But uh, you know, do your own due diligence, do your own research, and make up your own mind. All right. But this this story is Uber and Lyft saying that 
If you become an employee, uh, a bunch of drivers are going to lose lose their jobs. Believe it or not, I say not. Okay, next story. Uh, it's from the Sacramento Bee. It says, uh, unlock this story. Let's see, I've got to sign in. This is crazy. I hate it when these newspapers won't just let you w look at look at the content. You know, they make you do all these uh, all these hoops. Um, okay, back to the article. Okay, um, Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash initiative seeking labor law exemption heads to California voters. So this is a little bit more about what we were just talking about, but this is just saying that this thing is going to uh, go go to the voters. And um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. We'll just see. All right, I'll talk more about this on another another episode. And our last article for this podcast episode, Uber introduces a new hourly rate for longer multiple stop trips. How does $50 an hour sound? So basically the way this is going to work is uh, a, a passenger can hire you for an hour. Uh, using the new hourly function, riders can set the amount of time the trip should take, thereby locking in a flat hourly rate for the duration of the ride. All right, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an hour, but um, and the rate is $50. And the driver is going to earn $36 uh, out, of that, out of that $50. Um, that's what I have read. Um, so we'll see if that is actually true. Um, $36 an hour is pretty good. It's pretty good. Last time I drove, I averaged about $32 an hour, and that's driving in San Francisco. If this is a flat rate, uh, depend, doesn't matter where, you're, where you are, um, that's going to be great for some of the smaller markets. Um, Uber first tested the idea overseas in countries like Australia, Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. Now it's bringing it to 12 U.S. cities, Atlanta, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Dallas, Houston, Miami, Orlando, Tampa Bay, Philadelphia, Phoenix, Tacoma, and Seattle. The company says it expects to expand it to more cities in the coming week. <coughs> Excuse me a minute cough and uh, have some more coffee here. So that just goes along with some of the other changes. Yeah. So there's going to be this new flat rate. We're testing it out in 12 markets. Drivers are going to be wearing masks. Passengers are going to be wearing masks. No one's going to be sitting in the front seat. It's very interesting. A lot of changes. And, you know, it really comes down to you, the driver. Do you feel it's even safe? Is it safe? Mask, no mask, you know, I don't think it's safe. I don't think it's safe. Um, they say the uh, the way you get this virus is you're within six feet of somebody and you're, and you're together for about 15 minutes. It takes a little while for it to like get strong enough that it's actually contagious. So if you're in a metal box with somebody for a half an hour trip, um, and you've got your mask on and they've got their mask on, they're not 100%. That's a pretty ripe, uh, ripe spot for you to, to get this virus. Now, if you had your windows rolled down the whole time, um, not so bad. But sometimes it's cold outside, right? And you're not going to be able to keep the window open and keep a lot of air floating through, through the car. And then if you get it, how, how are you going to feel about if you get it and then you don't know you got it? Uh, you can you can have it for up to five days without showing any symptoms, and then you're infecting other people in your life. Oh, it's a big risk. Um, our our rideshare guy survey says 60% of drivers have decided to stop driving. So, be interesting to see if you decide to go back. You know how it how it how it works out for you. All right. So there's uh, six articles. Six articles we just covered. Covered a lot of ground there. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something about it. Uh, it's a very interesting times, of course. You know, it just feels like the world's completely changed. Completely changed for us as drivers. Completely changed in terms of our, our economy. 
terms of how we interact with each other. And, and now we've got this uh, George Floyd incident and riots going all over America. It's uh, challenging times, challenging times. And I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me. And uh, that's a wrap. All right. So fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it every day. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Jay Crater, uh, sheltering in place on June 1st, saying uh, this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.